Welcome to a brand new episode of Bill and Pam Podcast. Bill and Pam. Do your intro. Oh God, I didn't come up with an intro. Hi, I'm Electric Bill. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a rhinestone studded skin suit stuffed with pure unadulterated hatred. Pam. Yeah. And I'm the villain of my own story, Joseph. Like, and this is our podcast. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hi guys, we're back um, after some uh, money moves, some stuff, <laughs> some yeah. things happened, and we're here with a very special guest of the podcast, friend of the show, um, ever the name on everyone's lips, the one that we think everyone cares about, but nobody really gives a shit about. I don't think anyone knows, but nobody cares. <laughs> Joseph. Joseph. Hi. Okay, so tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us who you are. Let the people know. Um, I've been a friend to Bill and Pam for years, <laughs> and... <Friend>. No, get <laughs> Rude. Been a friend to Pam. <laughs> we have a long streak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't use Snapchat because it's witchcraft. <laughs> witchcraft. You? Okay. <laughs> you part... Okay. okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're not going to get into this right now. <laughs> um... Yeah, Joseph and I have known each other going on 15 years now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's an official member of the House of Pam, which is, like, my group of friends that are, like, not Jackie and Bill that help me produce myself, help me come up with ideas, help and support me. Stay tuned and you'll figure out more of his involvement in all of this. We're not talking about it yet. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, stay tuned. Okay. Stay tuned. So, to get this all kicked off, we wanted to introduce a new segment to the podcast. Um, we're introducing a new segment called Oscar, Oscar Bait. Bait. <laughs> Oscar Bait. In which every week we talk about some book, TV show. Some form of media that we forced ourselves to consume tape before the podcast. Drawing, <laughs> art, hologram that we absorbed. All the time. <laughs> um... Like, Do you want me to go first? Yeah, you can go first. Um, go okay, well... Because I'm my, still figuring out what I'm talking about. I know, <laughs> my Oscar rate, I was going to talk about... Um, okay, so I'm reading a book currently. I haven't finished it. Mm-hmm. It's called The Music of What Happens. It's by Bill Konigsberg, I believe. He is the author of the Openly Straight Duology, which I read and loved mm-hmm. both of. Um, this one's not good. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I don't, like, I don't like the characters he created here. Okay, well, is Openly Straight good? Oh, I loved it. Oh, I haven't read it yet. Oh, I love I, both. I love both those books. A I lot. think I have that one, but I, don't know. I have it on my shelf. I never read it. Lot bag too. Um, but <laughs> I, I love, I love that duology. It's very special to me. I just love the characters in it. However, this one, mm, I don't really like the characters he created. It's. What's it, it about? It's t- two guys. There's, um, annoying out jock gay and uh, emo well? emo twink gay oh god and they, and they work together on a food truck on a heist <laughs> on, a, <laughs> on a food truck that's all that's basically all i know so far and that's basically how honestly i'm kind of down I mean, that's basically how the story been presented to me they're both awful people i hate them both but like the side characters are fine. I sent you. There's a character named Pam in there who's just, yeah, just, just the worst. <laughs> just Have awful. you read Social Intercourse? Because this sounds a lot like a bad Social Intercourse. Oh yeah. Well, so there's like Social Intercourse, and then I feel like, what if it's us going to be here? I'm God. thinking this book's here. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> nobody knows that's listening what you're doing. So describe <laughs> your hand motion. Oh, uh, Social Intercourse, I feel like is really good. I haven't read it. What if it's us? I, like... I hate it. I hated it. I wanted to burn that book. <laughs> I'm hating the music of what happens so far, but we'll see. After I got we'll finished reading happens. that book, I literally threw it at Katie at lunch and said, it's yours now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I mean, yeah, that's not to say Adam Silvera doesn't write good books, because he has written several great books. Oh, Adam Silvera was held back by whoever co-authored with that. Oh, but, like, um, yeah, we're what, Didn't oh, she yeah. do Simon vs. Homo Sapiens yep. Agenda, which yeah. is itself a rip-off of FML by Sean David Hutchinson? Well, there you yeah. go. <laughs> I haven't read uh, FML. I've read... Oh, I've Everyone read, read FML. Everyone read um, The Five Stages of Andrew Brawley by Sean David Hutchinson. It oh, is not fun. So it is not a fun read, gay book. Oh, no. <laughs> have you read Rare in the Ants? 
No. By Sean David Hutchins. I need to. Oh, it's so good. I have it. I will make you read that. I'm a fake fan. I actually haven't read a lot Don't of Don't read At the Edge of the Universe because there's a little bit of ableism in there that I need to work through. But mm-hmm. I still need to read... Oh, uh, what's the one you uh, uh, so The sure. Apocalypse of Illuma Dosa. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. It's so He's good. He's a great author. Yeah. I, um, I, um, I haven't read that one. I, this, I this book reminds me a little... Okay, Apocalypse of Elena Mendoza. It's a lesbian retelling of the Bible. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> that's the only it's way everything. it's explained it's that. everything <laughs> I think that's but so funny a book that the one you're describing that reminds me of this isn't my Oscar bait but um that you're describing that reminds me of is Social Intercourse I lent Social Intercourse to you like almost a yes. year ago and yep. you still haven't read it <laughs> it's on my shelf <laughs> and I want it back because I want to reread it so I read it or give it back I will <laughs> read it if you let me it's borrow it eventually every it's not great but it's <laughs> Everything. No, but you read portions of it with me, and I enjoyed them. Yeah, because it says, fun. like, it says, like, literally the age, like, suggestion, because books have those now, it's, like, age of 12 and up, and it has the most graphic shower masturbation scene <laughs> I've ever read. Did we buy that when we were in Rogers? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's right. Because I remember you, I was with you when you bought mm-hmm. it. We were at a Barnes & Noble. I was like, where would we have been at a Barnes & Noble book? Yeah, like, mm-hmm. Oh my god. We need I mean, to, the Barnes and Noble. I want to dive into our Rogers story eventually, actually. <laughs> eventually. I love white people, Phil. <laughs> maybe, we'll get, maybe we'll get to that in a second. The but, um, social intercourse is kind of the same thing. It's like a theater twink gay and like a jock bisexual. Oh, yeah. And they're like fall in love while conspiring because their parents are dating and they fall in love while conspiring to break their parents up. <laughs> and it is oh, the no. most sexually graphic young adult book I have ever read. <laughs> I love There's a scene describing where Twink Gay, and I love that Twink Gay isn't like totally castrated, like he's very sexualized. <laughs> Fully is like jacking off in the shower thinking of jock gay, jock bisexual, I can't remember their names, while, <laughs> while finger blasting himself and then comes so hard that he collapses in the shower which causes his dad to come in and check on him and see what happens. <laughs> oh no. I love sex positive YA. I mean, Me it's too. great. It's it fun. was great. <laughs> I I unironically love that book. Yeah, it sounds fun. But, okay, um, so what's yours? Okay, my Oscar bait. I recently saw Ma, <laughs> oh, no. starring a bunch of people you have never heard of, and Oscar <laughs> winner Octavia Spencer. <laughs> Was it good? Was it good? Oh, it was awful. She was the best part. It was one of the worst movies I have ever seen. In the final hour, whenever she has them all, like, chained, spoiler alert for Ma, whenever she has them, whenever she has them all chained up in the basement, there's, like, the five main friend characters, and she's, like, coming up with different, like, methods to torture them, and some people get off way easier than others. <laughs> because, like, she sews one girl's lips shut, and, like, irons another kid's skin. But then the other kid, like, their one black friend, she's like, I'm sorry, these white people only have room for one of us. And then just paints his face white. Like, it <laughs> okay. seems like he got off a little bit easier than everyone else. It seems like he got off a little bit. I mean, good for you, because most horror movies kill the black person the first chance they get. So, like, kind of good for you. But it felt like he got off a little easy. Anyway, there's a sixth character who is, like, another character established earlier on who is, like, super Christian and she goes to parties and pretends to be passed out drunk so they don't make her drink. (laughs) And and she um, is not part of the main friend group. She's kind of just a throwaway character. And for whatever reason, she's in the basement with them. And then there's, like, a scene where she, like, starts to run and Ma knocks her out. And then she is not seen again for the rest of the movie, and the house and the basement literally catch on fire, and all of the friends escape, but she's not shown. So not only did they forget about her, the movie itself and the script forgot the character was in the basement and oh left her to burn alive oh in the house. Oh my gosh! <laughs> like, she is not in the movie anymore. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> it's very, it's very strange. There is full frontal male nudity in it, which I appreciated. <laughs> um, it's the guy who played Gaston in Beauty and the Beast. Like, oh, she fully, like, oh. takes his dick out, and she has him tied up and had, like, a butcher dog. She's like, am I gonna do it? Am I gonna do it? Am I gonna do it? Like, no, instead she gives him a blood transfusion with dog's blood. What? Through his dick? No, uh, uh, just through his arm, but uh, she was, like, manhandling his dick because he, like, sexually assaulted her. 
Um, oh. Whenever they were in high school. Spoiler alert. Whenever <laughs> they were in high school. <laughs> oh, is that the build-up here? <laughs> kind of. Well, I thought it was going to be some like stupid bullshit. Like, she was bullied in high school. No, it shows what happened, and it was horrifying. Oh, wow. Because he had, like, a... Cr- she thought he had a crush on her, thought he liked her, when she was, like, the nerd in high school, and fully gets, like, a note and goes into a dark closet and gives who she thinks is him a blowjob, and then she comes out and the entire school is just in the hallway, and it wasn't him, it was his friend. Oh. Oh, and awful. it was like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, legit sexual assault. Yeah. Yikes. And um, the movie is more... It's not sympathetic to Ma. Like, it's not saying, like, she's right for doing this, <laughs> but it, like... It humanizes her, like, and you it, see... I see why she's doing it, I guess. Yeah, and um, I hoped that his kill... His kill was the most creative one, because none of the kills were, like, super creative. Um, but she... Fo- I thought it was going to be the most creative, and he was like... Because if you get a transfusion with the wrong blood type, it, like, fucks you up. Yeah. Like, it kills you. You die. Your body shuts down. You go into a meltdown. And I thought that was what it was going to be. She was going to transfuse him with dog blood and, like, just let him slowly die there. That's not what it was. She just slid his wrist. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, this? What? <laughs> <laughs> Why? What? <laughs> um, there's also an amazing... There's multiple scenes that I can't tell if they were supposed to be funny or not. Because, um, like, there's a scene... Elaine Hendricks is in it. Oh, yeah, um, about, and Alice and Janney. Like, yeah, Alice and Janney is in it. <laughs> um, then Juliette Lewis is in it. And um, then, you know. What was the it, budget for this movie? $5 million. Oh, I assume. Which isn't a lot. I assume $4 million of which went to Octavia Spencer. <laughs> right. Yeah, they did it on a budget of $5 million, though. Mm-hmm. Wow. I can see it. <laughs> I can see it. Yeah. Um, it wasn't, like... I'm not going to d- do a deep dive in this movie because I don't want to take up too much time. <laughs> but there's a lot that I could dissect with this movie. Go watch it if you like... I feel like if you like... If you like chat piles <laughs> and small towns with casinos and Octavia Spencer and Sleepaway Camp, <laughs> You're gonna- go watch this movie. You're going to like this movie. <laughs> Okay, you're going to tie everything to Sleepaway Camp, though. Yes, I will. <laughs> That's coming up. We're going to do a special Sleepaway Camp episode soon. Yes. yes. Uh, Richard Angela. Oh, my gosh. It's That's like, iconic. Did you put any chips in here? Yes, I put a whole bag. <laughs> 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 it's like, oh I gosh. tied it around my finger. <laughs> Oh, oh my god. Okay, Joseph, your turn. So, I recently found a book. It's called Carry On by <sighs> Rainbow <sighs> Rowell. Oh boy. Whoever oh. named their child Rainbow Rainbow Rowell. Oh, oh, no, oh we should no, do. No, 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 no. Rainbow Rowell, very problematic. But... Yep, yep. <laughs> yep, she well, is. Well, no, oh, I'm no, excited now. Not, not, in the gen- not, not that she's like. Done anything? She just had like she's the one that wrote Eleanor and Parker. And I told I showed you all the very racist scenes. In the oh, book. <laughs> yes. Carry on is a spinoff of Fangirl. Yes. This Fangirl had the little like <laughs> of Carry on, which were so boring. Yeah. But then I read Carry on, and it's actually pretty good. But yeah, I I and haven't I haven't like read it all the way. I just now started it, but it was pretty interesting. The writing style is. I mean, it's fun. It's a it's a Harry Potter like game. Gay- what? It's basically, it's basically Wait, what? a parody of ha- Harry Potter, that, but it's gay. <laughs> yep. Well, according to J.K. Rowling, Harry Potter was gay. <laughs> too, <laughs> but, <laughs> have you seen that tweet where it's like, no one gets to tell you what your sexuality is. Your sexuality is assigned to you by J.K. Rowling. <laughs> <laughs> right? But, um... Yep, no, you keep going. I don't need to talk about the book. Also, uh, J.K. Oh, Rowling, no. just so everyone knows, J.K. Rowling is garbage. She's a turf and she hates trans people, so... Remember that. Right. I I don't really have a yep. lot really to say for the book. I've been enjoying it in like a like an okay I just think of it as like a gay Harry Potter fan. It's a fan fiction. <laughs> it really she just wrote gay Harry Her, Potter. Fiction. Okay, are we ever going to talk about um after? Is that what the movie was called? <laughs> the the after the One Direction fan fiction that got names changed 
and then turn into a published novel, which is now a movie. <laughs> what? And it's being distributed. It's all like 600 pages long. It, yeah. Oh my, my god. Favorite, it's 600 pages here. long, and that is the shortest book in the series. <laughs> and my favorite show. part is like the big notebook moment. Like, he wrote to her every day. It's like, at the end, he wrote his entire like literature term paper about her. And then the professor is like, he wrote this for you. I'm going to let you have this. I'm like, this breaks a million academic integrity <laughs> laws. But we but were making was, a... There was another moment in that movie, though, kind of like what you're saying with Mom, where we, I didn't understand, like, the buildup of why he hated, like, her dad or whatever. And mm-hmm. then you find out that, like, when they were younger, he pissed off some people at a bar. And then the people from the bar came into their house and, I think, raped the mom. I don't know. That was a whole weird storyline. Yeah. Like, that seems like... <laughs> Way out of left field. We were throwing that in there, but okay, okay. I still I, like our. Like, I still like our head canon That I still like our head canon That as she's reading his final essay, the entire time it's harshly graded because <laughs> she's reading this love letter to her, but it's fully like red pen. harsh, like red pen just crossing out things. There like, was cursive some, that you can't read. There was also there was Laura a lot, Henry cursive. There was a lot of poorly things things done poorly in that. But I don't know. I liked it. It was well, you, enjoyable. You, you, like, you enjoy it because it's Though bad. If you, if you but change, it was also beautiful. Right? If you change the music in a lot of those scenes, though, it could be a horror movie. But here's what I was saying. Because that, like, off, whenever, it was beautifully shot. I'm, I'm going to compliment. I thought it was beautifully shot. The music was really well. We loved the music. Yeah, yeah, the music was great. Like, whoever did that, A+. Plus. Um, it was... There was acting. <laughs> Once or twice. <laughs> Selma Blair acted. Hey, Selma Blair was in it, and we lost Selma our Blair, shit. <laughs> Selma Blair acted like she never acted before, because I think that was her last role. Yeah. Uh, That's so sad for her. Well, she, we, uh, we she went to... She just has um, MS? I think so. Yeah. Parkinson's, maybe? No. Is that the same thing? No. No. But she had, I don't, I don't now know she had things about science. She can't talk. Is she going to be a new Legally Blonde? They're making a new Legally Blonde, by the way. I don't know how I feel. They are? Wait, are, are they making Legally Blonde 3, though? Yeah, it's Legally Blonde. And Reese with those friends. Like, okay, I'm, I'm okay with that. I, I love Reese. Whatever. Like, okay. We'll see. I want it to be her trying to get on the Supreme Court. I want that to be what Legally Blonde 3 is about. <laughs> um, L <Al> versus Wade. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a prequel. About her mom, like, in Roe vs. Wade. <laughs> um, it's not even a comedy. It's a drama. It's drama. <laughs> but it's still called Legally Blonde 3. <laughs> <laughs> it's some other one, but it is a very much a prequel that's not very much related. Reese Witherspoon just happened to be starring in, like, a biopic about... The, about the attorney in Roe vs. Wade and to make it more marketable they made it Legally Blonde 3. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a decision. Um, but yeah, I didn't come up with a game for us to play. Does this count as our well, game? Why, no, we can play one with uh, when we have Dylan and Jack in here. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, at the beginning and we'll come up with something. Well, what I was going to do, I was going to have to do the thing where because I don't think we fully got in on this Joseph, like, knows more about me than anyone else alive. <laughs> we, right. like, talk on the phone, like, up to three hours a day, almost every day. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, it's a little, and now his mother is calling him, and I, uh. and I know exactly what thoughts are going through his head right now. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Fine, don't worry about it. Um, I'll call her back. So I was gonna do, like, have you ever been to those weddings where they have them sit, like, back to back and ask trivia questions about the other? I was gonna do that, but I wanted it to be, like, really, really specific questions. Okay. Like, what designer has, like, according to Pam, what designer brand has not made good clothes since the 90s? (laughs) (laughs) Name one lunch his mom would make for him in that dirty oven in junior high. (laughs) (laughs) In that dirty (laughs) Because I can think of one. <laughs> Crescent rolls with string cheese that you dip in pizza sauce. Which is really good. It was pretty good. It's really really pretty. I've made those in my dorm before. Oh, they're pretty, they're good. pretty decent. Those are pretty good. Right. Um, but, yeah, I didn't prepare questions, so is this the end of this segment? Yeah. This is the end of this segment. Okay. okay. So, coming up, we're going to get Dylan Ramos in here to talk about Joseph. Yeah. Huh? No, you're still in for this. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. All right, so 
I'll edit another annoying sound effect into this part. Do I need to Hi, I'm playing Harlot Oscara in the next production of Gonorrhea with the Wind. Electric Bill. <laughs> and I'm an overused hit pad soaking in a bathtub full of pure tequila. Pam. <laughs> and we're back. All right, with additional guest, Dylan, Dylan Ramos Mornay. Hello. Now, you've added a name. So some shit's happened. Oh, yeah. Every week, shit's happening. So... Want to want to fill us in on the shit that has happened? You, you've it. added a name since we met you. Where, yes. Where, where did this Dylan come from? <laughs> <laughs> Who's this Dylan guy? Um, yeah, I am now uh, gratefully and honored enough. Um, I'm Renee, family member now. Um, Debian asked me to if I would like to do one. I was like, definitely, because um, the Mornays have a lot of respect within the community and within the Marcus family. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, uh, that's how that name came about. I just, just came out of nowhere. That's oh, awesome. Wow. Yeah. It's cool. It's definitely a big honor, though, because it's such a good family and a lot of really prestigious is. queens and kings have came from that family. They're good people. Good people, mm-hmm. definitely. So, let's delve in a little bit more that a lot has happened since the last podcast, including the green lighting of roughly 50 new shows. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm, like, becoming a... So, do we want to just, like, go down the line, do or it. do you have specific ones that you want to talk about first, or... Um, okay, kind of chronological. Any, okay, anything new that needs to be updated about abduction? Anything else yes. you need to get out about abduction? Um, June 20th. As you guys have already met, Joseph, um, he is the official assistant show director for abduction. Yes. Um, he now will be with me on all my shows, really, um... He will be, you'll see him, like you've said in the last podcast, you'll see him on June 20th. Um, his job is pretty much doing everything that I do. So if, Everything that he doesn't want to do. <laughs> yeah, everything I don't want to do. Um, so you're going to see him, like, for the queens and kings out there, if I'm not around, you go to him, and uh, he'll run by, he'll check with me on everything, and he'll pretty much do what I do. Like, he'll be getting the DJ stuff going, he'll be getting the lineup made. He'll be down there assisting Queens. He'll be helping make sure that the lineup's running out to the show. There's a lot of stuff that He'll I He'll be do. in the parking lot washing your car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. like, and bringing you can't find Dylan, go to Joseph. Yeah. If you can't find Joseph, go, go to Jackie. Dylan. If you can't oh, yeah. find Jackie, go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there's a lot of stuff that I do that people don't get to see. And um, that's what Joseph's going to be doing. So he has his work cut out for him. But it's going to be fun. He's really, he's talented. And I wouldn't be giving this position to anyone. He can do it. Uh-huh. I know he can. So, uh, then at Supernatural. Okay, wait, wait. Before we go into that, since we've already kind of talked about the Joseph situation, do we real? okay, let's kind of delve in a little bit more and talk about how this happened. Yeah. Like how, how happen. like how you met, how this went from like, how this came about, how this business connection <laughs> came about. He's a hot twink, and I was like, yeah, you get to direct him. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I feel loved. Joseph, <laughs> Joseph insists that he is not a twink. Every time I call him a twink, he insists that he is not, because I, because of how I talk about twinks, he thinks it's a slur. <laughs> oh my god, Pam gives so much shade. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah. how it came about, um, well, I met... I was going to your... It was literally on the day of recording the first podcast. Yeah, yeah I was going to... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I came over there to do the podcast, yeah. and I had never seen Pam perform before, mm-hmm. and I wanted to see you perform, and I think Bill, you were performing that night? You was, wasn't you? Yeah. yeah. You had never seen Bill perform either. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was well, I seen like that night. You were just painting to go. Yeah, I had seen Bill no, perform. No, I was performing. I performed that night, too. Not May 15th. Yeah. No. No, I, mean, you I was booked there, and then you ended up stepping in at the last minute. No, that was the 22nd. No, the day we were recording the first podcast. That Whatever was, we first that was May, that No, that was May 15th. Because uh-huh. you got into um, to your... Uh, I don't remember what you got into. Okay, no matter what it is, you are incorrect. I performed <laughs> that night. Oh, wait, no, no. He had seen you perform. He had seen yeah, you perform. Yeah. Okay, oh, okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Were, yeah I it was a week later when we like, recorded. You saw me perform one night yes, when Pam was just there. there. Yeah, I was just there. In Pam. In, like, half <laughs> Pam. Half Pam. <laughs> okay, that's why I was confused, because I was like, okay. Back to the story. Um, yes. yes, I had seen Bill perform. So okay, I was over there, and um, the Pam house. House of Pam. The house of Pam. <laughs> trained right into the front door, and um, I was like, here's all these people in the living room. And that, um, I-, I can tag in. The house of Pam thing is kind of a joke. 
Like, it's kind of started as a joke whenever we were first started saying it, but it actually is. It's legitimately, like, my closest friends, like, my council, the people that helped produce me. It's me, Joseph, our friend Alex, and our friend, which you've seen less often, my yeah. friend Katie, who's there every week. Yeah. Like, every time I'm there, Katie's with me. And Emily, which a couple of you have probably, who a couple of you have probably met a couple times, and yeah. who kind of got pulled into the big stir when everyone started asking who Joseph was. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes, uh, yeah. Why electric bill? <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> you're not like House of Pam, you're under the House of Noth. So. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. But anyways, back to that. Uh, <laughs> so I meet them, and I go sit down with them, I don't know, we, me and Joseph just like clicked, and... And I, I, can, I can tag in, I can tag in. Okay. <laughs> so when, so I didn't know that... Dylan or uh, Bill were going to be at Pam's house because I live here in, uh, by Joplin, and so I was like, well... And Pam we're... communicates poorly over text again. <laughs> <laughs> I was painting. <laughs> yeah, so I was going to... I was just uh, going to come up and see uh, both Pam and Bill perform, and he messaged me like an hour before I left and was like, hey... Um, you can come a little bit early and come see my apartment because I hadn't actually seen Pam's apartment because it was new. Yeah. <laughs> so I uh, got in a car with Alex and Emily and we drove up there and we walked in and there was two more people in the apartment that I even thought were going to be there. <laughs> and I was like, what the heck? And I met Dylan and I had no idea who Dylan was. I like that. <laughs> and apparently that's good for me. Um, do you have like? I'm not confident. Are you in a gang? I'm not like... confident. I'm not confident that you even still know who Dylan is at this point. <laughs> right. I'm not confident that you know who he is at this point. But uh, yeah, we we started I'm talking. Sure. Oh yeah, hi. <laughs> and um, we uh, just became really close friends, and we went and we saw uh, both Bill and Pam perform, and they did so amazing that night. My and iconic no diggity. Oh, and yes. I rolled across the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Cinderella, who's <laughs> that? <laughs> and that's how that happened. Yeah. And then it just took off from there. We, uh, he did mixes, which I thought was really cool because I didn't oh, yeah. want to do that. Mm-hmm. He, uh, he knew a lot about, for someone who, like I said, I liked the fact he didn't know me because mm-hmm. everybody knows me from Philip. And it's so annoying at times. No offense to anybody. But um, <laughs> no it's offense. nice. Yeah, it's nice being new people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice meeting people who don't know fuck me. Fuck every one of you individually. <laughs> <laughs> who I am. Like, I meet people and they're like, oh my god, you're the creator of abduction. I'm like, yeah, nice to meet you. Like, hey, can I get a booking? Wow. Like, there's a lot more to me than that. But um, so I've even had people say fuck me and make me famous, and that really is makes me upset. This full warning out there. This is why we um, need video footage of this podcast because I'm currently in full drag with a giant sign that says book me twirling oh it God. in the air. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but so I met him and yeah, like I said, it's nice it's nice to get someone out of the community to be in the show with me because you don't have that drama that comes with it of uh, the queens yeah. being mad that another queen's taking that spot. And, and I'm also not afraid of any queens. <laughs> yeah. He's gonna be, I'll put you in your place. Either way, he's going really, to be a really good addition to abduction, and he's gonna be, um, it's going to be nice having someone to kind of take the weight off me of doing all these shows. It gets tiring. It does. Yeah. So, so are we allowed to talk about what we talked about with the ball earlier? I was wondering. Sure. With me, with me and my involvement. Yeah, you can. Yeah. That will be. That'll be a little late. Okay. I'm prefacing yeah. that now. Yeah. But what specific qualities, like in Joseph, made you think he was qualified? And if you say twink, I'm going to. No. Um, <laughs> like, the quality is. Whole is, is <laughs> that's that's a good, really good statement. Analogy that, for Joseph. No. No. A whole lot of that's a really good that's, that's a really good question to um, ask me because I think that's a question that the community needs to know why I think Joseph qualification wise. He's very good for one, getting along with people. Like he has very good personality traits that people say I have and it's really not and it helps you so much being an owner of a show. And the reason why Joseph can do this, one of the main reasons is because he has very good people skills and communication skills is what you need when you are leading a show. Um, he's, he's very also, organized. He's the person you want to invite to a party. Yeah. Only because he'll clean it up for you afterwards. <laughs> 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 exactly. <laughs> oh, That's so sad. <laughs> it's so sad. But, true. um, he's very organized. He's very to the point of professionalism, which 
it involves all of that, and you gotta have that. Those are apparently my types. <laughs> those, <laughs> those. <laughs> and you gotta have that when you're running a show. So. Pivot. That's, <laughs> Sorry. That's that's the qualifications, I think. No. Aw, I think. Okay, so Supernatural. Anything anything to talk about with Supernatural? Um. You know, one of your three shows and three terrible themes. Um, yeah. <laughs> what a bad theme. Me a gun is such a bad. Time. Canceled. Canceled. Abduction canceled. Supernatural canceled. My three, sh- you know, that's funny. They say they say I have three shows, but I actually have five. So well, if, you're gonna, if you're gonna diss me, if you're gonna diss me. Get your facts straight on that. Of how many shows I have. Um. Well. You got those. It's a podcast. You have some shit shaking. Um. Maybe we'll finally get our thousand view this time. <laughs> Hey, I, like hey, I can say I can say I'm on YouTube too, so you know I'm famous. Um, I'm on YouTube and all the podcasts. Um, We're so, not going to take this to a YouTube video though because we don't think of James Charles. <laughs> because <laughs> we, <laughs> we, <laughs> well, it is going to be a YouTube video because we're on like we're putting the podcast on YouTube now. There's yeah, no but video. I don't know, we, we're not going to film vlogs. <laughs> we're not gonna, I mean, we'll talk about this later. <laughs> I mean, I still want to do the red carpet thing or that our idea, but <laughs> I, I don't want to be James Charles. Well, so. Dylan wanted to do like visual podcasts with get like a GoPro whenever he and I are in the car together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like, I've always oh wanted to do that God. with Jackie on the way. Me and Cam show. have a special relationship. We are like brothers. Like, we have a we very, fight. it's very crazy. weird relationship. <laughs> we get in the head of each other and you don't even realize it. Mm-hmm. It's what you kind of do when we're like, yeah. we're, we're staring at each other right now, just with those squinting mm-hmm. eyes, like. What what about my eyes are square? <laughs> <laughs> like that. And we got that over it. It's that kind of thing where we fight, hash it out, and then it's over. Yeah. This is why though I'm such great friends with Sam. Because <laughs> I love that. Anyways, what we used to talk about Supernatural. Okay, so um my terrible theme of Supernatural. How many um, horns are gonna be worn this time? Yeah. Because I think that's what drives. So we got Supernatural coming up <laughs> with uh, the Purge. Fire. Um Pyrotechnics. We uh the news about that is Joseph, like I said, is going to be my co-star director for production. He's for all my shows, really. Um, he's going to be starting once he's comfortable with the role he's doing. I'm going to gradually graze him into kind of like I'm still owning all my shows, but kind of being like a general manager of a show, mm-hmm. kind of yeah. being the lead guy to do what I'm doing. And, and then have maybe some other people kind of direct it for you, so you can yeah. step back and well, like, enjoy you know, your shows I'll, a little better. Go this is a thing. With this, Debbie on and count your cash. This, this <laughs> right? is a thing though. I have really been um, I won't say getting down about, but it sucks when you put so much work into a show, and you're downstairs the whole time. You don't get to yeah. see what the fans are seeing. You get here about oh man, that was a great show. I love seeing Stephen Storm with his or Stephon Storm with his costume, and I didn't get to see any of it. So I was downstairs the whole time. Um. And people say, oh, just walk up there and sit in the crowd. But I don't do that. As you guys know, in my shows, I'm down there with the queens. And it's going good. And so I'm kind of putting everybody in a spot to kind of lead my shows for me so I can be in the VIP booth. Mm-hmm. Enjoy what I have created and be up there and watch it with everybody and get to see a different side of it that I haven't got to see because I've been so busy. Um, so, yeah, J- uh, Joseph's going to kind of be taking over a general manager role with Supernatural and kind of lead that show. And he's, after, I have the themes booked out for this year, but starting in January, he'll be responsible for coming up with themes for that. And it's not like I'm not creative, because he's going to have to run by me and, you know, make sure I have my approval on all of it. But yeah. um, it's going to be cool to see kind of someone else take my show and go in the wrong direction with it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, so that's kind of what's going on with Supernatural. And he'll be kind of the general manager of Supernatural. Yeah. Ooh, exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Then and does he have to put that on his taxes? Mm-hmm. <laughs> on taxes. July, so July twenty fifth is the ball. We yes. said we have abduction okay. supernatural. We'll get to Jackie's involvement later. Yeah. So the ball. The so ball. Talk about the ball. So the ball. Um. It's... This was all made while I was gone. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. This yeah. Um, Joseph has been in like Pencil Pennsylvania. Yeah. For yeah. like Philadelphia. Two or three weeks. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a while. So. So I don't include this with Pam, but it's gonna happen. When I say something's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. Okay. Um, yeah. So I don't know why you have to clear it with me. <laughs> <laughs> the ball. Uh, now I'm nervous. You know, like I said, with the general manager going on with Supernatural and Joseph, I'm gonna do it with all my shows. Um, the ball is a show that was created for just entertainment really purposes mm-hmm. and wanting to do something different. Drag. So we got a best for Supernatural this month. The winner faces the Monets next month. The winner of that will be the Monets, and they'll go. 
Let's be so, real. <laughs> so um, after that, you will see Bill taking over as a general manager role for the ball yeah. with Pam as his assistant, kind of like Ian Joseph. And they are going to kind of direct the future of the ball. So and I'm, yes, I'm going to take, I'm, I'm already thinking through ideas in my head of how I want to, how we want some of that to work. Yeah. Um, cause we, cause we talked about that earlier and, and um, I think the ideas we have now of just kind of say like, like just picking two lead queens who kind of pick their own, like go back and forth and pick like a dream team mm-hmm. yeah. put up against each other. It just sounds kind of fun. And, uh, um, yeah. they're going to take over that. And like I said, you know, it's not me stepping down or stepping away from it. They're going to have to clear with me and make sure it's good. But yeah. um, they're going to take over that and kind of lead the ball in its own direction. And that's going to be – we're going to – it's right now with all these shows coming up. It's going to be – it's still bi-monthly. But eventually, I think if we can work into the schedule with Devion, it can become a monthly show, which I think would be good. And yes, Pam. Okay, so trying to clarify the having us, like, manage it, are you wanting us to, like, host it? Like, be on the mic and everything? Um, yeah. Like, what exactly did that mean? Oh, um, we oh can, okay. Yeah, you guys can host it. Or you can oh, host. Fun. Yeah. Um, I'm still going to come out at the beginning of the show and kind of, you know, say hi to the bands, and then I'm going to go up to the bar and get mm-hmm. go up to the deputy booth. But also, like, do the communicating with people, the <laughs> messaging and getting... Yeah, yeah we're good at that. Well, and we're also, like, isn't the ball, like, two teams usually pit up against one each other? So technically, you would be both be in charge of one team. Maybe in let like if we wanted to do one where is my team against his team, but I think it's talking I, I yeah, think yeah, yeah. I, we're that. gonna assign, I I think it's just easier if we just overall just run it. I think it'd be fun if we did a team against each other just like once. We can. Yeah, but I wanna wait a little bit because it'd be weird for two brand new queens to have our teams and think that's gonna draw names. And, like that's uh, gonna draw right. people. and reason yeah, why I pick, wait a bit. Reason I picked like Bill well I mean, because he's my cast member, you know, I, to, I want to pick someone from my cast, but uh, Bill has is best friends with Jackie, and Jackie's my best friend, so it's cool to, to keep it in kind of like keep it in the family, in the family. And uh, abductions, is, I don't think anybody understands until you have been in my shoes of trying to do five shows and how man, how stressful it is. It's so stressful on you, yeah. and uh, it's cool because it's like come, becoming a business now, it's like. I went from holding one show with one queen and focusing on her to now only five shows and keeping all these going. And people say, I already know those people out there say, oh, you got to slow down on the shows, you got too many shows, and you're taking over Thursdays. Well, you know, I've I mean, worked, yeah. that's my, that was, in a way, it's my goal. That's yeah. why I've worked so hard to do, is to make these shows. And, bring, and it's going to keep bringing people out because these shows are so different from each other. They're all different from each other. And now having general managers like Jackie, like Bill, like, Joseph, you're going to have, in a way, of someone different running them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just going to be underneath the abduction name, which is what I've worked for. And I mean, I, I don't want to sound egotistical or um, selfish, but I work for this. I've worked to get these bookings. I've worked to get five shows. And I am going to... They've all been to better the community and to give new queens a chance to perform. Now, if you're on Wednesdays with Mia... You get so much lessons taught to you from Mia and the group, and now you can have a goal to go to Thursdays and be in one of these shows to, and you will get that chance because we will all will give them that chance. Yeah. And that's what's cool, you know. It's for people to advance in their careers, and I'm not, I'm not bad about that. I am. Yeah. I'm glad. Well, and somebody else could have done what you've done. You're just the first person that actually had the balls to try to industrialize and actually go for it. Yeah. Someone else could have tried to do what you've mm-hmm. been doing, you're just the only person that actually tried and actually worked and actually put in the work to do it. So yeah. no one can really be mad at you for that. Yeah. One, I mean, they will be mad yeah. at you, but one, no one has a right to be mad at you. The one <laughs> abduction thing that we, we forgot to mention because we talked about this several pizza the other night. Um, that was so good, too. Uh, <laughs> that's not getting drunk. <laughs> Tips. This episode is sponsored by Old Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Tips. So good, you guys gotta go check them out. No, I'm at the pizza that we had in Springfield. That too. Tips. That place was amazing tips. too. We're talking about okay. So an abduction. We have a new idea for how yes, we want tips you. to be run at these shows. Yeah, I am going to do something different with tips now. Um, you know, you see these queens that are dancing and having to go get these tips, and sometimes you 
they miss people with dollar bills. Oh yeah, I see lots of performers miss tips, and I, I so um, in my head probably not. They're not. They're not usually like coming in for yeah. me. But like, <laughs> so <laughs> what we are going to start doing starting an abduction this month is we're going to have boxes put out. Yeah. And they're going to be idea. put out throughout the whole stage. Yeah. Like, like we're thinking one. Four, one one in the side. One, one, one well, I'm actually doing. Uh, I'm going to do more. Of those you know three main points of the stage: the right, middle, and left. Yeah. Uh, but they're going to be also two boxes in the middle. So if you have a tip to give a queen. You're gonna go up there and put it in the box instead of handing it to them. Actually, you can yeah, hand yeah. it to them if they're right there for you. Yeah. But now they can put their tips in boxes, and then after every performer goes off stage, we we'll have someone come out, grab the tips out of the boxes to give to their queen. We think that'll be yeah. Joseph. We want Joseph to be the tip boy. <laughs> we want Joseph to be the tip boy. Yeah, you come out. Wear my grab. slot crop top. Yeah. yeah I think it would be a full size shirt on you. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. Maybe. We'll still discuss about that. For a, second I thought, for a second, I thought what you were saying is we're going to have a tip box and at the end of the night it'd be divided among everyone equally, and I would be like, I don't care for that. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, the Queen's more for ass This is not that, a so. socialist com- country. <laughs> no, we were, we're, we, cause we worked out, I, like, we were trying to think of a good idea for that, because also, I don't know how, because if you just put, like, one tip box, then some people are going to be lazy and they're going to be like, I don't want to go all the way over there. But if we put them on each side of the stage and then someone just collects at the end, that could go. Yeah. Especially since a lot of people in the back don't tip because, like, you have to fight to get to the front or whatever. But maybe yeah. encourage people yeah. to tip more. Oh, yeah. And um, it's going to be good for them. So that's... Mm-hmm. I like it. It's going to be fun. Mm-hmm. I'm excited. I think it's a good idea. Um... And we want to like decorate them for show. I know for Pokemon. It's we're doing a lot Pokemon easier. balls. We want to do Pokemon like balls. Pokemon balls. Yay! Yes. <laughs> and then I'm gonna have it. Like, let's see if I can get it to where you can open up, and then so like. You should you make know. one that looks like. Is it? There a thing in Pokemon that's like square shaped, like a lure or something? I don't know anything about Pokemon. Which is why I'm in the show. <laughs> which right? is why I'm here for yeah, Pokemon like, Pride. Like, I know nothing about it. I know how to play the game. That's about it. The Pokemon. I ball. um own the one on the Switch, and I got bored. <laughs> <I'm> bored. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I like Pokemon Abridged. <laughs> I love Pokemon Abridged. It's like, prepare for trouble, make, make it twice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am a nurse! <laughs> okay. So, should we... So anyways, we got, we got some okay. more. What's the stuff. fourth show? It is a new show. Okay, there's five. Wait, actually. are we talking about... Yeah, yeah are we talking about Seduction? So I, I will introduce... I never talked about them yet, so I will introduce that. So... My fifth show is actually a show that is co-created. It's a 50-50 show owned by me, but I'm also having Uwa Mune come in. And me and him are going to do a show together called Subduction. It's a spinoff of Abduction. Su- um, it's, subduction. It's, it's going to be... It's, it's Seduction. He just has oh, problems su- problem saying the su- word. Seduction. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what What'd you say? He, he, it, he has problems saying the word seduction. He calls it subduction, it which is a thing. Cool, it's a geological term. Subduction <laughs> is whenever one tectonic plate sinks below another. <laughs> and I'm here for that to be the seventh show. <laughs> Let's do it. Fuck it. Subduction. Like, okay, let me. Really, like, let's, 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 like... let's rewind a little bit. Okay, so I am actually working on a show with Uo Mune. It's going to be co owned by us. It's called Seduction. 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 Yeah. Um, anyways, back Michelle to the point. It's a spin off. It's, it's, <laughs> it's called a, Seduction. <laughs> it's, a, it's a spin off of Seduction. And, and. I fucking hate. You know, you're all out of my show. I'm going out. Anyways. Um, we'll all join. No, I'm not going to say that. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you need to recycle your trash and let it go to something else so they can use it, so someone else can use it, and that's what we do. We recycle people if they're not recycled trash. Um. Anyways, so <laughs> seduction. I'm really excited. Seduction is a really good show. Um, co-owned by me and Uomarne. It's gonna be a drag show with sex themes. Ooh. So you're gonna have a leather sex theme you're gonna have a country sex theme you're gonna have okay sexy I love, guard. <laughs> okay i love i love where did you get country sex <laughs> I know. I, is that a, do people like that is that a thing colorado springs to do it oh it's i give mystique's country realness but like, it's like we time. uh no we went out to like, like we, cowboy hats and assless chaps like, no, we, I, we, we, <laughs> I hate the term assless chaps because chaps are by definition assless. They Sorry. did it. They did it in Colorado Springs. That's where I got the idea because they had a show. We it was the day after me and my ex left there. I I heard them talking about it on stage. It's called a sexy 
country theme. And, like, you can do, like, these really weird, just out-of-the-box ideas. Yeah. We um, I think it's turn so you fun. into a truck. <laughs> Mater. <laughs> No, so we're gonna turn. Oh my God! I'm gonna call it seduction. Seduction. Ah, see, it's easy. I don't do it all the time. It's not my show. It's not my show. <laughs> I'm excited about it though. I think. Okay, so do we want to get to the fifth show and bring Jackie in? Let's wait. Wait, is the other the Project oh. X, whatever you're calling it, is uh, is that one clear to go to where we could talk about that one yet? Or that one announced the end of the month. Uh, no, I mean the other show at the other. Can we talk about it yet? Yeah, yeah, it's already done. It's already booked. No, no, the sixth show. That this is stupid. You we'll got, talk okay. about it. Off. So we're not going to talk you, about it. Okay, you got, you got. These are the shows that we can't talk about. You got abduction, supernatural, introduction, ball the mall, and seduction. Mm-hmm. So we're going to get to introduction in a bit. We can't talk about what you're talking about. I think okay, I know cool. what you're trying yeah, to say. That that yeah, that one we have not covered. Yeah, that's still going through. Okay, so um, we're going to... And we obviously can't talk about your announcement at the end of the month. No. So. Then let's let's take a break, and we're going to get Jackie in here and see how she's doing stone in that coat. Yeah. <laughs> like, all right, so we'll be right back. da 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 I'm the sole writing credit of Bad Guy by Billie Eilish, Pam. <laughs> and your mom sells me Mary Kay. Electric bill. <laughs> and, you're, <laughs> and you're listening to segment three, bitch. Okay, so now with extra special. <laughs> Let me loudly finish my drink. Yeah, we have Jackie here. Yeah. You didn't know well, she doesn't talk. <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna introduce her. Also, maybe this is just me being a narcissist, but it's very hard for me to tell my voice and Jackie's voice apart in recording. So maybe that's something other people have to deal with. Oh, we're gonna look at the shit bad. <laughs> okay, so Jackie, talk about yourself at length. Hi, what do you want me to talk Lysol. about? Jesus, and Lysol. What is the circumference of... No, I'm not going to say that. Okay, so the main... I'm going to say that. So the main... It wasn't her dick. I was the say the main star of abduction is here. Lorna. No. Um, yeah. Jackie, you are... So we're kind of calling you the main person of abduction now, but... Is that a thing? We're, it is. We're, okay. You're a match. But we also have... The fifth show, which we did not talk about because we were waiting for you, to stand a coat. And uh, tell us about it. It's What is it called? Okay, uh, this new show that we're doing, um, which is actually going to premiere on uh, July 11th, uh, um, it's called Introduction, and it's going to be my first show that's, like, really my, like, baby you know it's kind of something that i'm kind of like working on and creating yeah. alongside dylan and we're gonna kind of use this as like a way to get new queens and kings like into a bigger crowd um it's gonna be basically t- kind of like how um diamond in the rough like diamond in the rough for um mia's wednesday shows kind of were they they really they took a lot of newer queens <coughs> and and kings and just kind of let them you know, do their thing and kind of teach them and, like, let them hone their craft and let them be who they kind of were. Um, but we're going to let them do this in front of, like, a bigger crowd on a Thursday. Yeah, that's what's fun is it's an actual, like, paid booking. Well, what I, what I think is fun is that you're mixing in established queens with them as well. Yeah. What I think is interesting, because didn't this first one, didn't you cast Chris? Like, Chris Cole? Yeah, um, in this first show, uh, I... I have Mia Gunn, Chris Cole, as and me, myself as kind of like um, the like the experienced ones that kind of know what they're go- what's going on, and you know can yeah. help uh, some of the ones that haven't been in it for very long, which uh-huh. I haven't been in very long either. But I mean, I've you know I can well, help them out a little bit. Well, what I think is cool about that is because like with D- Diamond the Rough is great and everything, and Mia's Wednesday Nights are great, but it's usually just like the same kind of experienced performers trying to learn from just the audience interaction. Mm -hmm. This allows them to be learning based on how the audience interacts with them, gets them to learn, like, what it's like to do a paid booking, and they get to be learning behind the scenes as well, as they see, like, Chris and Mia and you getting ready with them, too. Like, it's a learning experience from start to finish. Right. I think that's what's interesting about it. Um, yeah, it's, it's, basically, we wanted to kind of use this as, like, a teaching moment. 
uh, we've talked about like at the end of every show doing like critiques, uh-huh. kind of like what what let them do like a question and answer type thing. They can ask us any questions they want to, or we can help them build up you know ideas for the shows leading up to it. All kinds of that. We just kind of want to like let them bring the ideas that they want to bring and help them perfect it as much as they can. Hip pads are flying. <laughs> we got fans. <laughs> it's hot as fuck in here. Yeah. And so we... Because I'm the Nazi that insists that we turn off the air conditioner so we've, been, like, we've been throwing around my hip pads and using them as fans, but it's okay. <laughs> They're shit pads. I mean... <laughs> But I'm so I'm We so should have brought my hip pad. They oh, fanned uh, front the room. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so excited for the cast you have. I'm so excited for I don't know, I'm just excited for this. Yeah, I'm really excited. Really cool. I have a really good like group of people. And we um, also have a lot of we have well, we say we have a lot of variety. We have <laughs> you get one opera singer and then all of a sudden you have a lot of variety, but I love it. <laughs> well yeah, that's what I want to talk about. Like um Yeah, I I, I, I love a little bit of the cast we have. Because like we have Chris and Mia and myself, like we've seen us do our thing, you know. Y'all know what you're going to come and see. Um, but with, like, I'm really excited that we're bringing back Bella Laveau. Yeah! I love Bella. Um, we haven't seen her since... I, I'm pretty sure since she left the competition tonight's Drag Race. Yeah. Um, she's one of my favorite people. She's just so sweet and nice and a great performer. Fantastic. Yeah. Like, so she, I know. She so I'm really, really thing. excited to, like, see her back. Um, and she's really excited to come back. But then we have Rhett coming back, who, or coming into our show for us, who I think is just a really amazing person. Um, I haven't gotten to meet them a whole, whole lot, but when I I get, they're really sweet, and um, from what I've seen from their drag, I mean, I'm ready to help them grow as much as they need to. Yeah. I mean, and I'm... From what I've gathered, they're ready to take everything they need to do to grow as much as they can. Uh-huh. And I'm really excited that we're going to... I'm trying to get Kings into this as well, because uh-huh. there's not very many in the area, but I'm trying to, like, push and get some in here. We're getting more and more, though. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's finally, like, starting to build. There was... I mean, there's three that were... Uh, three or four that were in... Um, that started out in the Big Brother... Com- big Sister competition. Uh-huh. Um, and then we also have Liz Victrola... Um, who I got to meet at the pageant. Well, actually, I got to meet her I when she was Jenny Kelly's dresser um, back at the Newcomer pageant, but I never got to see her in drag. Um, she does everything. She is a burlesque performer. She's a general, like, lip-sync drag performer. She does opera singing. Which she's going to do at opera Martha's singing. I'm so excited. Which we're excited because we're going to get to experience both her burlesque and her live opera singing at my show. She also makes her costumes. Yeah, she makes her set costumes. Pieces, yeah, think. she makes set pieces. Like, she does everything she's good. the ground up. She's amazing. I'm ready for her to, like, start getting in front of a crowd. Because um, she's just now starting to perform by herself. Because she was in a burlesque troupe before that. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> and so... Now she's kind of bridging on her own and trying to do her own thing. Yeah. She's but, a diva, right? Yes. Yeah. So I'm super excited about that. And then I also have Bill, too. Yes. Which, if we're going to talk about that. Out. No. <laughs> <laughs> I have to see her. Jane. Yeah. <laughs> Thirty dollars out of my I'm paycheck her every fan. month. <laughs> I'm her biggest fan. I'm her biggest fan. Well, I'm going to say now, because I know people are going to be asking about it, <laughs> is why did I make a show for Jackie? I know people are going to say that. Um, when because she's amazing. She's amazing. I mean, you manage her. But yeah, I'm that kind of what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, I was watching it. Yeah, see, I uh, I did Drag Race at Fusion, and I had let them take control of it, and I just kind of you know do what I'm doing for the same thing for now. Jackie, it may be a show, but oh dang it, Uh, (laughs) Jackie is in control of this. Thank you. Are you That's sure? That's a good client right there. <laughs> I, anyways, Jackie's in control of this show introduction, and it's her show. Like, it may have my name on it, and Brandon's an abduction, but like I said, general manager of the show, it's Jackie as general manager of the introduction, and she uh, is definitely the perfect person to have because she has done so much in just one year. How long? Yeah, not even, not even a year. Not even a year. Nine and months. She's without doubt one of the fastest growing queens in Springfield, so she's definitely a perfect person to do this. When's that baby popping out? It's doing it for the community. That's what me and Jackie are both doing. It's doing it for the community to 
help new queens and kings come along and establish themselves. So. Really I have a question that. that I kind of want to ask, but I feel it's more of a businessy question, so Good. I feel like I love it. Okay, well, we had like previously talked about <laughs> in, um, <laughs> we had previously talked about just about cover charges because you had mentioned that maybe you were thinking about raising cover charges, lowering cover charges that mm-hmm. you don't really make a profit off of the show unless you charge five dollars. Mm-hmm. Jackie's show, the cover is three dollars. Four dollars. The um, reason why we lowered it is because we have to. It's, it's, not a abduction of Supernatural. It's mm-hmm. a show that's going to have a lot of newer queens in. Yeah. And we lowered it just to kind of get a, mm-hmm. make it more accessible to get a bigger crowd. Yeah. You know, because the more prices you have, the more people are going to come up and get out. Mm-hmm. Sometimes. Um, but you wanted it, I wanted to separate the prices from mm-hmm. abduction to this show because it's more of a show we're doing for um, just newer queens and we're not going to have as many big queens. Mm-hmm. The reason why abduction, like, I could easily raise the price to seven dollars. Well, I get, that. but I can't. But mm-hmm. but I can't raise it because mm-hmm. I don't want to do that because I want. I don't. It's not really. I'm not doing it for the money. I'm doing it for yeah. the queens. And uh, you know, I do it because also I have a lot of big names and I have mm-hmm. to give them show pay. Mm-hmm. And uh, introduction, we're not really as worried about that as much because we only have a couple big queens, you know, in it like mm-hmm. Chris Cole and Mia. So. It's not as accessible to make such a huge profit off it to get yeah. them show Well, I get that. I get why it's lower. Yeah. My question was more like, are you planning on kind of running it like at cost, like running the show at cost, or like, oh, what's like? That? I mean, what's your plan? Because you said that you wouldn't be making a lot of money if you charge less than five dollars. Um, so, so are we going to raise it eventually? Is that what you mean? Huh? Uh, no. Yeah. What I'm just saying is like, are you kind of running it more as like kind of a non-profit style show, or it's, like what's your philosophy? With it's it? not gonna. Well, my philosophy on it is we're not going to really... Um, You're a lot not of these, a lot going of these newer, in to try to make money off of well, it. Well, yeah, but a lot of these newer queens aren't going to be getting... Mm-hmm. Show pay as much because mm-hmm. I mean, for one, you're doing this show for experience. You're doing this show to be in front of a crowd. You're gonna get mm-hmm. tips. All of them are gonna be able to keep the tips, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, you're not really. We're not really focused on making sure everybody is getting show pay every single time because we have to keep the money to get bigger queens in the shows, and mm-hmm. we're not charging as much, so we can't give everybody show pay. Yeah. But if you are a bigger queen and a special guest, we'll try to give you show pay on that. Whatever we don't make, we'll try to save up to be able to eventually give show pay at mm-hmm. four dollars. A mm-hmm. ticket to all the things eventually, mm-hmm. but it's not gonna happen right off the bat. You yeah. know, you gotta keep this business aspect of we can't. We, as much as I would love to, we can't do it right off the bat until we until we know how many people. Be careful with that. That's a good pass. Oh, okay. Until <laughs> <laughs> we know how many people are gonna be in the show. Yeah. So right off the bat, we have to see exactly how much audience we're gonna have for mm-hmm. show to balance out how much we can get of each queen. Yeah. For sure. Okay, I was just curious about that because yeah, I'm, interested, I'm interested. I'm interested in like the business aspect yeah. of, the, of this. Um, so do you want to read off, like, your entire cast that you have, or have you already kind of mentioned Yeah, it? um, so... We kind of did. Yeah, kind of. She, I mean, is there anyone that you... I didn't want anybody to be left out just No, I mean, I've said everybody... So, like, if you saw my Instagram, you saw everybody get, um, announced, but it's... In the show, it's going to be myself, Chris Cole, Mia Gunn, Electric Bill, Bella Laveau, um, and then Liz and Rhett. We are also... If you saw that announcement, we're also going to do a theme for this show, which is going to be like a night at the movies. So I plan on like kind of dressing everything up, and we're going to have kind of like a red carpet, like Hollywood movie yeah. premiere type. Who you thing should wear your on. red velvet dress, lay down on the ground, and let people walk all over you. <laughs> Here for, <the>, for tips. <laughs> <laughs> for, for, this is performance art. <laughs> I love this. I uh, was like this. I'm like, I'm not performing. This is my performance. <laughs> like, just laying there. Like, this is the waste you create. Step on me. Step on me. <laughs> but yeah. In full drag. In full drag. No, in full just drag. the dress. Just the no dress. panties again. <laughs> no panties. Dick out. Not cinched. No pads. <laughs> yeah, um, another thing about this show, though. It is $4 cover, and we're doing it on July 11th, which is a Thursday. Um, we also have other shows coming up. This isn't going to be just like a one-time deal. Um, if you're interested in being in the show, I've already had a couple, couple people reach out to me. Um, please feel free to message me or Dylan to ask about, you know, what, you know, about your interest in it, and we can work on definitely getting you one of the shows for sure. Yeah. yeah this is definitely a great way to, uh, build your name up mm-hmm. in front of a Thursday crowd. 
eventually we'll move your way up into abductions if you have I think it's going to be cool. I really want to do it eventually whenever you have room for me. Um, but I also, whenever a new show is announced, I hear it off in the distance like an angel's wings. So. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> like, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, yeah, like, I have a lot of cool ideas for the show. Like, I want, like, I I, like, we're thinking about, like, doing, like, a disco theme or maybe, Fuck like, some up. other thing. Fuck me, yeah. But, like, I kind of... Fuck me like, gently with a chainsaw. <laughs> but, like, as the shows go on and if, like, maybe, like, a, a little bit down the road, like, a few months down the road, I'm thinking about bringing, like, an all-star cast back of, like, let people kind of vote on who's going to be in the show. And through the all-star cast, maybe let, like, have, like, a competition, maybe, and have, like, a vote at the end of the night of, like, who wins. And maybe we can, like, see about maybe making somebody a permanent cast member on that or yeah. bring somebody to, like, have, you know, do something with that. But I think that'd be, like, a cool idea <coughs> that I thought about doing. Okay. Yeah. So, um, for the first show, for Night of the Movies, let's, because I, I assume that some of the people that are going to be in that first performance are going to be listening to this, just, let's take this moment to kind of give them a little bit of, like, a packet of what you're looking for. Like, describe exactly what you imagine and what you're looking for for your first show of Night of the Movies. Like, what you would want to see a queen turn out, or what kind of references you're looking for. Performing. Yeah. yeah. Well, really, I mean, it's kind of broad, um, and the way that, like, you, you can do anything. I mean, you can go for, like, way out there and eccentric, like, weird stuff. You can go for, like, a horror-type aspect. You can go for Broadway, like, theatrical-type things. Or you can do, like, old-school glamour. Like, some of those Mars Attacks. Yeah. I want some to do Mars Attacks. do, but basically, just, yeah. like, follow, like, a movie theme. I mean, that's kind of what we're trying to do of, like, do like songs from movies, yeah. or do um, just kind of just kind of like center your performance around yeah. something that has to do with like a movie. Yeah. Pretty much is what I'm looking for. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna be great. So that people can get the references that we're making. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? This isn't the yeah. best transition, but Dylan did remind me that we haven't mentioned it, so we should mention that uh, um, on June fifteenth, abduction is <coughs> their own portion at Martha's Pride. We're really excited. Where the cast is, I believe it's Jackie. Lumberjack, uh, Lumberjack, Adore Versace, Aria. Aria, Aria, and me. And you, yes. Um, okay. How that came about was we, Debian asked me to be in uh, Martha's Pride with them, and uh, it's kind of, I've asked about it and we worked the deal out. So you're going to have, I know the mermaids get dusted and abduction will be in it, and uh, there'll be a lot of other people too. Yeah. But I picked, you know, obviously my abduction cast, and then we need a spot left to fill because he was already in it. And uh, so we went to Supernatural and got Bill. And um, so that's going to be a cool uh, be there because we're going to also have uh, all of them performing one number. And it's on Friday. I'm not sure exactly what time. I need to go with Dev on what time they're going to be going on. Uh, but stay there because, like I said, you, know, if you never know. Like, if someone can't make it, you just might see Pam being dragged for that. You never know. You you should probably warn me ahead of time because it takes me a good three hours to get the drag. <laughs> but either way, you can come out there. You're gonna minutes. see you'll see all of us. Uh, I'm sure. I, okay, I got in the drag in 20 minutes for Wednesday, and I looked better than I ever have. Well, uh, so. You can uh, come out and see support the abduction cast because it's great. It's a great event. If you ever been to Marcus on Friday, it's packed all day, and it's so much fun. Uh, you'll see all of us there. I'm sure Pam will be there and Joseph will be there, so you get the. Yeah. See us on the VIP, dude. And um, it's going to be a great day. But yeah, it's okay, be a good you day. can hear the air conditioner on in the background because Bill's a fucking whiner and wanted to turn it back off. It's fucking it's hot, man. Hot, yeah, man. It's really hot in here. I worked in the dead heat with a broken air conditioner in the box office for three months. It got 90 degrees in that bitch. <laughs> Don't talk to me about heat. I have Joseph over here fanning me with the pad. That's. Bill, so I'm just I mean, I'm doing good. Those You're gonna get a disease. Yellow yeah. brown pad. You're <laughs> gonna <laughs> get crabs. <laughs> so that pretty much wraps up this podcast. We've hit everything. I mean, how long does this really need to be? Yeah. If y'all uh, are still here, that's cool. I yeah. hate to so, say that kind of thing at the end of every podcast. But these are so fucking long, and I can't imagine. You know, it goes by, I always listen back to them. I, yeah. I, I, I okay, okay, maybe it's narcissistic for me to listen back to it. I think it's entertaining, and I think it it's is. fun. I think I we're good too. at it. Um, we, you'll probably There's have noticed you. we <laughs> have moved to YouTube now because Podbean is a nightmare 
and SoundCloud um, was going to make us pay to oh, upload more. So we have moved to YouTube, so subscribe <laughs> to the channel. Um, leave comments below on what you like. And, and our and next podcast will be on Vimeo. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, um, if like, and then we're moving to make, Hulu. Should we, <laughs> we got picked up. <laughs> should we make a Patreon? I think we should make a Patreon to see if anybody's dumb enough to <laughs> give us money. We could. I think we should. So, so maybe. Go the future is a movie, a movie about all of us called Abduction. And we'll be in a movie in a theater. Have like actors for all of us. That's it's like, like Rocky out. Horror. It's a shadow cast of, like Rocky Horror. We might make a Patreon if we can't figure out how to make a Patreon. We probably we'll will not be able to figure out how to make a Patreon. We'll just attach our cash out. We'll just have to attach. Um, Venmo. <laughs> love that. Um. Joseph and I do have a shared Venmo. Contact us if you want any custom mixes. We do that together. Right. So, um, and yeah, so subscribe to the channel. In the future, we are thinking about, we have a couple of ideas rattling around for video projects to do in the future yeah. for, um, for the channel. So go ahead and subscribe. And thank you for listening. And tune in next week when we may or may not have something uploaded with a person. <laughs> I don't know. Don't judge me. <laughs> okay, everyone sign off. I, bye, I'm Pam. Bye, I'm Electric Bill. Bye, I'm Jackie. Bye, I'm Joseph. And bye, I'm Dylan. Hashtag aliens are green. Wow, okay, cool. <laughs> bye. <laughs>